Hey guys, welcome back to iChat. I'm going to do my best to keep this under seven minutes, so let's see if we can do it. I've been getting a lot of email asking how much time we should spend talking about PRN during an exam and how to present it best. Well, it all depends on what the patient's chief complaint is. If a patient comes in and their chief complaint is they have red, burning, irritated eyes, and that's the reason they're there, you're going to spend a whole lot more time talking about it. Whereas somebody on their CSI form just does a little check mark and says dry eye, but it's not a huge concern, you're going to spend a whole lot less time. So let's take a peek at what we can do and how to present it. For every disease state that a patient can have, there's something that I like to term the magic bullet. This is taking the symptoms the patient has, the signs that I'm seeing, and marries them together so that the patient understands the disease process. It then walks them through the treatment options available, helping them select the one that makes the most sense to them. Let's take a peek at how this sounds in an individual with a high level of disease state who has had an EPA DHA deficiency for a long time, so is suffering from a heart condition, potentially arthritis, but definitely has the ocular warning signs that something bad is going on in their body. The process starts as we're looking through the slit lamp. I always tell the patient what I'm seeing as I'm seeing it, so they can be part of the process. Mrs. Smith, I notice that you have a little bit of a cholesterol deposit in your cornea. I know your doctor has you on Crestor, and I'm glad they do. You and I are going to chat about that in just a little bit. As I'm looking at your eyelids, I'm noticing that there's some bacteria there, a little bit of debris. In fact, you know, now that I'm looking at it, I notice that your glands are a little bit plugged. Um, these are an oil-producing gland that helps to keep your eye comfortable and healthy. Noticing that those glands have been plugged for a long time, it's not just today, it's not yesterday, because you're actually getting some scarring along your lid margin, and that scarring takes a while to develop. In fact, when I put all these things together, I'm noticing that your tear film itself is not as stable as I'd like. Um, this is nothing major, but you and I are going to talk about this, because this is a process that continues as time moves on, and we have a choice. We can either stop it, or we can let it go. We'll talk about that in just a moment. I then pull the slit lamp away. Mrs. Smith, what I'm noticing is that your eyes in general are fairly healthy, but there are some basic maintenance things that we can do to help keep your vision stable and to keep your eyes healthy for a long, long time. Because um, what I'm seeing on your eyelids are actually signs of inflammation. Now, this inflammation gets progressively worse as time moves on. And as I've mentioned, we have a choice. We can either intervene now or we can leave it. Let me ask you a few questions to see if this is bothering you and if it's something that we should pursue. Have you been noticing that your eyes water at all in the wind or in the sun? How do your eyes feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you ever find that your eyes get tired easy or they're maybe a little bit gritty or a little scratchy? Now I'm noticing that during our eye exam when we were testing your vision that when you switched from one eye to the other eye you kind of had to blink to clear your eyes. Does that happen on a day-to-day -day basis or at any time that you're aware of? When you were looking at our FDT today, you were doing that test where you pressed the button, you were telling me that your vision was graying out. Um, does that happen at any other time or is it just during that test? Well, I'm glad that not everything I've mentioned has started yet, but you do have a fair number of the symptoms of dry eye syndrome or what's called tear film deficiency. And it turns out that the inflammation in your rest of your body, that's that arthritis you have in your knees that you've mentioned, that's that cardiovascular disease that you have, turns out that these are all interlinked. And this is something that over time is going to get worse. And that's something we can stop if you'd like to, or we can continue to let the process go. So my question to you is, would you like us to make your eyes feel a whole lot more comfortable, to have a lot less watering going on, and to potentially help your arthritis out at the same time? turns out that your dry eye, that irritation and inflammation you're having, well, that's a warning sign that there's a lot of things going on in your body. It has a lot to do with inflammation. What's causing the inflammation? Well, in our diets, there's a balance that we need to have between omega-6s, which turn on inflammation, and omega-3s, which turn off inflammation. Unfortunately, in our diets, and in fact, looking at your medical history here in your diet, that you have a lot of pro-inflammatory omega-6s. Now, those are found in everything we eat. So a lot of our the vegetable matter that we're eating, or a lot of the meats that are fed on vegetables, so beef and chicken and a lot of those things. What we need to do naturally to counteract all this inflammation is make sure we have omega-3s. But not all omega-3s are created equal. Some are really good, and some are not so good. 
The omega-3s we need are the ones found in fish. In fact, EPA, which is the omega-3 we really need, casapentanoic acid, it's only found in fish fed on algae or plankton. And the question I have for you is really simple. How often a week are you eating fish? And I don't mean how often do you intend to eat fish, but how often are you actually eating fish? And other seafood doesn't count. Okay. And when you do eat fish, what type of fish are you eating and how is it prepared? Does it tend to be battered with chips or does it tend to be steamed or poached? In addition, when you eat sushi, when you're eating fish, are you eating sushi? And does that have rice with it? The right. problem we run into is that because of the amount of, uh, because you're eating the North American diet, that gives you a high level of omega-6s, so we really need a high level of omega-3s. When you are eating omega-3s, which means you're eating fish, you're also deep frying it or battering it or eating with chips or you're eating it with, uh, with rice, and those all have omega-6s in them, so you're really not helping the balance a whole lot. And when you're eating fish once or twice a week, according to your body and the inflammation we're seeing, for you, we probably need to go to a five or seven times a week. Now that's a lot of fish. It's kind of unreasonable for me to ask you to eat fish that often. And for someone like me who doesn't like fish, it's definitely not a possibility. So what I take is a nutrient supplement. But not all nutrient supplements are the same. Some are really good and some are really bad. Just like glasses, there's good ones and there's bad ones. What I'm gonna say is I want you to avoid things like flaxseed oil or supplementing flax. Alpha-linolenic acid, when it enters our body, actually immediately converts to omega-6, further increasing the inflammatory process. In addition, I don't want you to get your EPA DHA over-the-counter. The vast majority of the over-the-counter EPA DHA, they're ethyl ester forms. These are definitely not what I want you to have. An ethyl ester form is bound to alcohol, and because you have diabetes, that's gonna, you're going to have to burn off that that's going to raise your sugar levels. Not only that, when you do take it, I want a certain level into your bloodstream. I'm looking at getting about two grams into your bloodstream. When you take an ethyl ester form, you're taking it, it goes into your body, it goes straight on through. Only about 30% of that is actually being absorbed. That's not going to be effective. In fact, to be effective with those, we're going to have to give you about 20 pills a day. That's way too much. I don't know anybody who's going to take I want you to take the one that I'm on personally, the one that I give to my mother and my family, and it's going to work for you. I'm going to put you on an initial three-month treatment. I'm going to have you come back in two months, and we're going to see if there's anything additional that I need to add to your care to prevent this. We're really testing for a nutrient deficiency. If we see some changes in what's going on with your arthritis, if we see your, your dry eye disappearing, well, we're then going to know that you have a nutrient deficiency in your diet. And we have two choices. We can either change your diet radically or we can stay on the nutrient. The biggest thing is we need to set up expectations. We need to let the patient know that there may be additional steps when they come back in two months that we're doing. We're not checking if the nutrient's working. We're doing additional steps. We also need to really look at those allergies that they have. We need to make sure that if they have a stomach upset, they have a minor itching or anything, that they can give us a call and we'll walk them through that. If we skip these steps and they have a stomach ache, they're going to stop immediately and they're going to come in and they're going to be negative on the product. The other thing is you really want to make sure you include that family doctor in the care so that you don't run into the family doctor wanting them to take them off a product that you've just put them on. That conflict can really destroy your relationship. And now that we've decided that going on to an omega-3 product is something you'd like to try, let's go see my team. They're going to show you how it's done. It's a doctor-directed delivery product. It's going to come right to your door for convenience. And zip outside, they're going to give you a hand. For somebody who comes in with dry eye as their chief complaint, it's okay to do what we just said. Spend five, six, seven minutes talking about dry eye, maybe even 15 minutes if that's what it takes. But for somebody who comes in and their chief complaint is they're having trouble with their glasses or they're having trouble seeing the street signs or their reading's getting a little tough, you don't want to spend that much time. Here is the quick, concise, one-minute approach. A patient tells you they have a symptom, watery eyes. You explain that the watery eyes that they have, it's actually part of an inflammatory condition known as dry eye syndrome. 
and that this is going to get worse as time moves on. Would they like to treat it? Their answer potentially is going to be yes. You say, great. The way to treat that, there's actually a nutrient that can really help with that. Now, there's a lot of nutrients on the shelf that we can buy. I want you to be very careful and not grab one from off the shelf. The nutrient I want you on is EPA, DHA, but I want you on a very specific, specific format of that. I want you on a triglyceride format. I want you on the same product that my own family is on. If you're going to get one over the counter, it's not really going to do what we need it to. So let me get my team to explain to you how to get the product. It comes from mail order. They mail it right to your house. We'll put you on it for two months. We'll have you back and we'll see how it works for you. That's a really quick, easy approach. Your team can help you out. There's one other tool that you can use and that's the health coach. This is to be used if your clinic is extremely busy and you really have no time to spend with the patient or your team really has no time to educate them on the product. Mrs. Smith, you're mentioning that your eyes are watering at home. I'm also noticing that happening in the exam lane here. What I can say is that this is actually going to progress. And as time moves on, you're going to start getting a red eye. And in fact, I can already start seeing the scarring along your lid margin. That's going to get worse. Would you like to stop this? All right. In order to stop it, what we need is to increase the anti-inflammatory nutrients in your body. And that nutrient, I want you on a very specific one. It's called EPA and DHA. These nutrients only come from fish. Now you've mentioned you don't eat a whole lot of fish in your diet. What I'm going to do is get you started on the right product. Now I really want you to avoid going to the drugstore and grabbing EPA or DHA. The vast majority of them over the counter are bound to alcohol and that version it's not going to absorb very well and it's not going to give us the results we need. I want you on the exact same product that I've put my own family on. What I'm going to do is have one of the health coaches from the company, it's called Physician Recommended Nutraceuticals, give you a call. Now I've spoken to them personally. I'm going to have them give you a call and educate you just a little bit about the product, give you some more information, and they're going to touch back with me and let me know what you've decided to do. I'm authorizing you to go ahead, order the product from them, I'm going to review you in two months and see how things are going to see if there's any additional steps. It is done via mail order, and when they contact you, they are my representative. Well, guys, thanks for joining us for iChat. I hope we made the time budget here. Enjoy the rest of your coffee break. Bye-bye.